Hey guys, Humphrey here. So it's been a brutal market as of recent. Both the S&P and the NASDAQ are down quite heavily this month. We're all gonna be rich! Ah! We broke even! Ah! Due to the upcoming interest rate hikes, high inflation data reports, and overall uncertainty in the market. My personal portfolio has been bleeding a bit and most tech stocks have pulled back as 2022 is underway. Today, we're actually gonna be talking about how inflation actually affects stocks and go over some strategies and assets that you can invest in to protect your portfolio against inflation. But first, we actually need to rewind and talk about how we got here in the first place. And it has to do with the P word and no, get your mind out of the gutter, not that. P word, but actually the pandemic. So with the onset of the pandemic back in March of 2020, we actually saw a flurry of economic stimulus ushered in by the US government in addition to an emergency move, which actually brought interest rates down to zero in March of 2020. Then we saw stimulus and relief bills passing left and right. For example, the HEROES Act for $3 trillion, the CARES Act for $2.2 trillion, and supplementary measures for the PPP and the AIDL were all signed in 2020. The Fed was so scared about uncertainty the pandemic would bring at that time, they basically started to throw money at any plan that would bolster economic relief. And this is best illustrated with this graph. This graph is of the M1 money supply in the United States. The M1 money supply is just the most liquid portion of the overall money supply that exists in our nation. So this includes bills, checks, basic savings accounts, and other assets that can be quickly converted into cash. As you can see, the money supply took off like a rocket ship right about here, which was in 2020. This means that the average American has more money and this type of money printing has devalued the US dollar rather quickly. In addition to the money supply, we had unemployment benefits often exceeding what workers would make at their normal jobs. While this obviously helped many people survive the worst of the pandemic, many people are now unwilling to go back to work for previous wages. A lot of workers also have continued concerns over health and safety of returning to the workplace as well. With unemployment paying workers not to work, this actually caused a shortage of workers, which then resulted in businesses having to compete with the government, raising wages above unemployment levels. So while big businesses will be able to adapt to higher wages, many small businesses will not be able to stay competitive in hiring. So you have more money supply in the economy plus increased unemployment benefits. And the net effect is that there's more demand for goods and services. As demand goes up, the total number of goods and services available will decrease as more people are able to afford these goods and services. But as a result, businesses will then raise prices. Another problem we ran into last year were supply chain issues. As you probably probably saw during the Christmas season, many businesses were urging customers to order early in order to receive the products by Christmas day. In addition, many stores were and continue to struggle to keep their shelves full. During the height of the pandemic, many companies actually decreased their production because consumers weren't spending. However, with the stimulus and the economy regaining its footing rather quickly, demand came back just as quickly and companies had been trying to play catch up with satisfying that demand. When you combine the increased demand with a shortage of materials and supplies, along with major traffic delays at the ports, you get what we have now. As of January 20th, there were 103 container ships backed up at the Los Angeles and Long Beach ports. In fact, the congestion at the ports had gotten so bad that the US Navy is actually using their base in Ventura County to help relieve port congestion. In this graph, you can see how costs to ship one container have skyrocketed since March of 2020. So increased costs in shipping containers across the world will pressure profit margins for companies, which would then likely lead them to pass these costs onto their customer, thus raising the prices for their products. In the most recent CPI report, inflation rose 0.5% month over month and 7% year over year, the fastest annual increase since June of 1982. Inflation creates economic uncertainty affecting the ability for companies to plan and invest in longer term contracts and companies margins may also shrink as the cost of goods increase across the board. Inflation will then reduce expectations of earnings growth, which in turn lowers the value of stocks. While inflation is still here and contributing to the increasingly bloody markets, let's actually talk about our four strategies that you can take to invest during this inflationary period. Right now, there is some fear in the market. Marty, I'm scared. 
and there may be some buying opportunities in specific assets rather soon. All right, so starting with strategy number one, it actually comes from a paper that I ran across titled The Best Strategies for Inflationary Times. And if you've actually seen my prior videos, you know that I've gone over this paper before, but it definitely offers a ton of fascinating insight and was published in 2021. The first strategy is to invest in stocks that historically do better during inflation, which are larger market cap stocks in a couple of sectors, which I'll get into. The paper states that sectors with high exposure to the individual consumer, such as durables and retail, and the technology sector had weak returns. Durables had a minus 15% real return, retail was minus 9%, and tech was also minus 9% during times of high inflation. Surprisingly, the financial sector was also found to be a weak sector at minus 9% as well. This is because the risk of default is larger than the benefits of rising rates to combat inflation. Theoretically, stocks should act as a hedge against inflation because a company's revenue and profit should be growing at the same rate of inflation. Based off historical data, it was found that smaller markets market cap companies performed poorly, while larger market cap companies in the energy and the health sector reacted better to inflation. This is because the larger companies are more likely to have the necessary infrastructure and money to adapt to a volatile US dollar. On the other hand, smaller companies will probably have to make more effort to adapt, and that's probably why you see the results that you see. As I've discussed in previous videos, growth stocks will likely continue to struggle during this period of inflation, while value stocks will hold their own. That being said, the overall market will continue to be volatile as in investors wait on the Fed's actions, as well as closely track the inflation data coming every single month. Strategy number two came also from the same paper, and it discussed that commodities have an impressive historical performance during inflationary times. Not only do all commodities like livestock, gold, silver have positive returns during inflationary times, but they can actually benefit from rising inflation. If you are interested in investing in commodities, the easiest way will be through ETFs that track for instance, livestock, and there's an ETF with the ticker symbol COW. I kid you not, that allows you to invest in hogs and cattle. So, ticker symbol COW. Who'd have thought, when inflation is high, trust the cow. Now, as a homage to the cow, I actually have some milk right about here that I'm gonna drink to, so, moo. An area of caution about investing in commodities is the fundamental shifts that are happening right now. For example, with electric vehicle technology developing at faster rates, it's possible that oil and other fuels will lose their historical inflation performance. While this isn't a large concern in the short to midterm as electrical vehicles still only make up around 4% of global auto sales in 2020, the demand for oil and other fuels could decrease over the long run as the auto industry evolves, just a heads up. Now, strategy number three is real estate. Let me move this milk really quickly first. So if you currently own a house, then good for you. Real estate is another great way to hedge against inflation. Since housing prices rise with inflation, homeowners should continue to see appreciation. Another nice thing is that as a home rises in value, it lowers the loan to value of any mortgage debt that you may have on the house. Since your mortgage payments won't change over time if you have a fixed rate mortgage, inflation means that you need less purchasing power to pay off that mortgage in the future. All right, now onto the fun stuff. Strategy number four, alternative investments. Now, this is pretty fascinating. It was found that investors who had a net worth of at least $30 million had around 50% of their assets in alternative investments. So what are alternative investments? So they can be anything from wine to whiskey to art to even graphics cards. In 2021, according to Art Market Research's All Art Index, art actually posted a 58.81% return. This was over double the return of the S&P 500. Now, while it's difficult to find an an exact reason for why art had such a great year, it likely has to do with the rapid growth of high net worth investors, low interest rates, which leads to larger demand. I have a table here from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, but also from Motley Fool, which actually shows the returns of different investments from 2017 to 2021. What's crazy is that whiskey actually has a 22.39% average annualized return since 2017, while the S&P 500 had an annual return of 17.04%. With rising demand for whiskey, Whiskey, the value of rare whiskey has actually soared over 480% in the last decade and has actually outperformed every other luxury asset. All right, so since I drank some milk for the video, I should drink some more milk because this is a PG channel and we're not gonna drink whiskey because I'm not 21. <sighs> uh, that was a joke. I'm, I am over 21. <laughs> 
Another really crazy alternative investment that would have earned you a lot of money would have been graphics cards. As you may or may not know, there's been quite a semiconductor shortage for quite a while now, and the supply for graphics cards has not been meeting demand at all. As we can see here, if you were lucky enough to buy any of the Nvidia graphics cards for retail price, you could have easily doubled your money. Now, personally, I have a GeForce 3090 in my desktop, but I had to overpay for it and actually buy it with a pre-built computer or else I couldn't get it on the market on its own individually. Now, now, I'm not really telling you to sell your stock portfolio and go all in on whiskey, art, or graphics cards. I'm merely showing you that this is the power of alternative investing. The point of all this is to think outside the box with your investing. Something as simple as a random collectible could actually turn into a valuable investment. It's probably one of the reasons why you actually see NFTs doing so well this year as well. There's just a lot of money and people are speculating on different types of collectibles. The last bonus strategy I have for you guys, which is a lot riskier than the other type of investments on this list is getting yield through cryptocurrency. There are some methods of investing your cryptocurrency right now and saving your cryptocurrency in a way that can actually yield you between four and 20% annually. One of them is lending out a stable coin on the Terra network, which I recently did myself. I detailed that in my video on crypto passive income, which I'll link to below in the description. Now, investing in cryptocurrency has a ton of risk, so I don't recommend going right off the bat for it. But if you are familiar with the risks, it could be worth it. So those are some strategies to protect yourself from inflation. But what am I doing right now? One of my main goals this year is to invest consistently into ETFs such as VOO. Researching different companies can be very time consuming. And I believe that the overall market will continue to perform well over the long run, especially because my time horizon is at least 10, 20 or 30 years out in the future. If valuations of individual stocks that I already hold go to extremely cheap levels, then I may consider buying the dip. Now, if you guys do want to get alerts whenever I buy or sell a stock or a cryptocurrency, make sure to check out my Patreon where I do make my buy alerts visible to our patrons. So a lot of the market volatility that you're seeing in the market right now is due to the Federal Reserve planning on raising interest rates and reducing their economic stimulus to combat inflation. If you are getting super stressed over your portfolio, you may be overweight in some stocks, have invested too much money for your own risk tolerance, or just check your investment accounts a little bit too much. Whatever it is, remember that investing is a long-term game. And as with every investing video, the moral of the story is to invest smartly, consistently, and for the long term. I'm gonna leave some relevant videos up on the screen right here that you can check out after this video, including my investing plan for 2022 and much more. So that was the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.